sharpening class. Now today we're going to teach you how to sharpen using machines. Now I showed you guys how to sharpen a blade flat on sandpaper. I showed you how to put the hollow ground back in your blade with a sharpening block using sandpaper. But now we're going to teach you how to sharpen your blade with the actual blade machine. Then I'm going to show you how to modify a blade, making it crispy sharp for a barber using this twice as sharp machine. And I'm also going to show you using this T-sharp machine, how to buff and restore a rusty blade. And yes, all of these machines, including the Traco machine, are all good machines to use. Now, what do we need? We need clippers and blades. And yes, I got a box of blades and clippers. And this is not just anybody's blade. This is my barber's blades. Yes, my barber who cut my hair. And I know y'all thinking, don't you cut your own hair? Y'all see me in videos cut my own hair. But guess what? I can cut my hair and ice myself out. But I really sometimes don't really feel like it or got time to do it. Hey, man, a hot, top-notch celebrity chef can cook any food he want for himself. But the dude still go to a restaurant and eat. Because he don't always want to cook for himself. So yes, I, I, I got my barber. And now, these clippers right here is not, my barber is not just any barber. I got a celebrity barber. Y'all don't know him, but y'all know him. Now, one thing about my barber, he upgraded over the years. Now he used cordless clippers. He used the magic clip and the TI line of cordless because now he want to be high tech. But over the years, he used these clippers in the box. Corded clippers, the Wall Senior, T Outliner, the Master. And because of being a celebrity barber, he's traveled all over the country. He went to dry climates, moist climates. And when you go back and forth, your blades will tend to get rusty. So what happened is he said to me, hey man, what about these jacked up rusty blades? I told him I can restore those blades because he he wanna hold on to his older clippers. He, he wanna make sure he can still cut with these things. So that's what I'm gonna do for him. And now y'all get the opportunity to see me use these machines hooking up his clippers. Because this my barber's clippers. He cut my head. So you know they got to be right. All right? So we are gonna take these blades off. That's the first thing we are gonna do. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is get all the blades off the clippers. Now, once you get the blades off, you got to take and put them inside the muffin pan. Now, why I use the muffin pan is because it allows you to keep all the blades separated properly and you keep everything together and you don't mix any blades up. Now, the one blade we won't put in the muffin pan is the blade that got all rusted. Now, what we're going to do is with this blade, we're going to take it off. And I'm going to show you basically what you do when you take these blades off. So you take the screws out. Now, once you take the screws out, like I did with all the other blades, is you take the screws out, you take the blade off, then you take the screws and you put them right back softly into the clipper. This way, you know for sure you don't lose your screws. Then, what you're going to do, just like any other trimmer blade, you're going to take off the center plastic sliding piece. Keep all this together. You keep these pieces together with your screws and put it in a safe place. Now, what you're gonna do is to allow time for this to break down, what helps is blade boost. So you take a little bit of blade boost, you pour it into a jar a glass bowl, and you you drop that in the bowl. That gives you some time while you're sharpening the other blades to help break down the rust from the blade. Now we're going to go to our sharpening wheel. 
Now keep in mind, I showed you how to sharpen with sandpaper, which is 220 grit sandpaper. But with our wheel, we use 220 grit powder. And we gonna turn our wheel into sandpaper. The same thing we've been doing. Now, what do you do? You need a nice oil, but the best oil I tend to use is Blade Boost. Yes, Blade Boost on the wheel, and then you take the 20 grit powder, and you put it all around the wheel. And then you take some type of wood block, and you smoothly get it into the wheel. Now you have a flat wheel that's just like 220 grit sandpaper. And then you get yourself a magnet for your blades. And now we're about to show you how to fire this baby up and get started sharpening. Yes, indeed. So what we want to do is sharpen these blades right now. And of course, we turn on the wheel. Once you get your wheel running, you got to pick your magnet. You got two sizes. This is for really big blades. This is for medium sized blades or small blades. So we're going to use this magnet. Next, you grab your blade. And when you grab your blade, you sit the magnet in the center of the blade. And of course, you want to drop the blade down in the center of the plate. And you got to make sure you go from this corner straight across to the center of the plate. It's as if you're making a straight line from here to here. An imaginary line, straight across. As you can see, I didn't drop the blade down yet because I want you to see what this blade looks like. This is what a blade looks like when it's worn, it's different levels, the different coloration, the discoloration in the blade shows that there are highs and lows in this blade. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like as the blade is being sharpened on a hollow ground plate. Alright, let's go. So that's two passes. Notice what just happened. You can see that it caught the major part of the blade. The teeth is starting to get a dull shine and you can see how the discoloration is flattening out. Let's continue. And as you notice, I come over the plate just a little bit on each side. And you notice how I stop, start in the center and I come stop in the center. And now notice what we have. That dull shine now has changed to a high gloss shine. Let's go a little bit long. Because if you notice at the bottom here, it's not completely shiny. It has some, some scorch marks. Let's go when that's all gone. got a nice clean shine. Wipe all that off. Now we go to the short blade. Let me show you what it looked like. See the discoloration in the corners? That means the blade is not level or even in the wear, wear and tear has taken place on the blade. Now let's drop it down in the center and start sharpening. got it's like a minute medium dull shine let's continue see what we have 
that's the shine we looking for. Get all everything off. Now let's go to our master blade. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Nice clean shine. And if you notice, you do it for this full shine. A little bit of this might start to shine, but don't worry about this bottom by the holes. It won't, that doesn't matter. This is mainly what you're focusing on. All right, we got the shine we're looking for. From the bottom all the way to the top. Now, let's get our master cutter blade. This blade, you grab the plastic piece in the center, put your index finger down here, put this finger here, and put the thumb finger right there. And hold it just like this, drop it down in the center of the plate, and now you sharpen. I don't know if you can tell, we sharpen it, it looks pretty good, but at the very tip, there's wear and tear that didn't get sharpened, at the very tips. You can see how the hollow grind started at the bottom and it came up, but the tip part of the teeth, it still needs to be sharpened. Let's go. See what we work with. Okay, now we got a complete sharpened blade from bottom to the top of the teeth, even in the back bar here. So just do a couple more passes to make sure we good. All right, we all set. Now we're gonna do the line of T-liner blade. We're gonna show you what it looked like. You see how you got that wear and tear, the discoloration in the blade? You can see it, that's the wearing of the blade, the dullness, and now we're gonna sharpen that up. Center the blade, drop down, and sharpen. Notice what it looked like, just a couple of passes. Can you see I did a couple of passes, and it started to sharpen the blade, but right there in the center of the blade, as you can see, the wear that didn't get touched yet. So that's why the blade was pulling. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep sharpening until all of that get faded out. Let's see what we got. You see on the ends, the sharpening is getting sharpened towards the end. But look at the center. That discoloration in the center, that lets you know that this blade was really dulled out pretty bad. A lot of the barbers, him being a celebrity barber, I'm quite sure he was lining people up big time with this blade, and you see it burnt out in the center. Let's keep going. See how we continue, and now the plate was able to gradually work the whole blade all the way across. Let's do a couple more passes to be sure everything is complete. Ah. 
All right. So now we got a completely sharpened T-blade. Now we're going to do the same thing for the cutter blade. We're going to do a few passes and let you see what it looks like. So as you can see, we did a couple passes. It's got a dull shine, but that lets you see that it was really dull. When it, the different levels of the blade. Now we got a completely sharpened blade. Everything is nice and even and done. So, I pretty much sharpened all the major blades that showed you how to do the sharpening process. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish sharpening the rest of the blades and then I'm going to show you how to clean these blades. Now that you got your blades sharpened, we got to move to the next step. The most important part is cleaning the blades. Now don't make a mistake about this. This is the easy part, sharpening the blade. But if you put that blade back together and that 220 grit is still on the blade, if you run them back and forth, all it's gonna do is grind your blades out and they're gonna pull hair immediately. So what you need to do is clean them well. And what I do is I fill two bowls up with blade boost. Now one bowl is considered, we call it dirty wash. And this bowl is considered clean wash. You never let any rinse off of grit go into your clean wash because this is your rinsing. So what you do is you grab your blade. So this is the first blade. So you take it, you go into dirty wash and you scrub this blade down really good. Go in between the teeth, come out here, scrub it down. And you notice I'm letting everything drip into the bowl. Right? So now you sit that there. Now you take and you dip into clean wash. And then you rinse over here. And you let that rinsing clean wash. You rinse down and let it all fall into your dirty bowl. Never let anything fall into your clean wash. Because that's how you know that you're really cleaning your blade. Now after you do that. You shake the blade off really good. Then you drop it down. And then you can get your second blade. This is the cutter blade. Do the same thing. Now you rinse that blade really good. Let it run down. Get in between the teeth. Get everything. Now once you're done, you drop the blade down the hands, you got grit on your hands, you take a nice, decent paper towel and you clean your hands thoroughly. And I mean get every piece of oil and grit off your hands and make sure they really clean because you don't want cross contamination. And the worst thing in this sharpening blade process is cross contamination of grit is no good for your blade. Now, if you notice, I use some high end paper towels because they soak up well. You drop the blade down. You take a section of the paper towel and you dry the blade and clean the blade really good. Once you use that section, you try to go to the next dry section. And then you keep moving to a dry section. You don't want to try to use the, sec uh, the same section over and over again. Turn the paper towel over and use another dry section. Go to another dry section. Then you take and dry the blade and slide it this way to see if it's completely dry. Now at home, I usually use some air. And in between the teeth, I try to blow 
and the twin is see to get anything if you notice we was dry but look what i just did so it was a lot of oil and grit in between the teeth now watch this you put it down and you drag and you see that shows you it's still with some oil and grit between the teeth you see how it's dry you do it again and if you notice it's just little residue left do it again now you know you got the grip from between the teeth and we nice and dry. Now you take and make sure you sit the blade on a clean surface. Now we done. So then you take the second blade. Start that process all over again. Get all between the teeth, get everywhere. Leave no space uncovered. Now you see this blade, it looks nice and dry. Now watch what I do when I blow the air down the teeth. See, you might see like a little residue and we just wipe that off. Now that blade is done. Now, that's the basic process of cleaning every blade. So now we're gonna get into modifying the blade. So we showed you how to sharpen, and of course sanitation, we gotta clean the blade. But now, this is my barber's blade, and I want my barber blade to be hit, so I'ma modify his blade. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get his blade and clean it. But all keep in mind that you gotta remember, if you ever had a thick pair of tweezers and you wanted to get a hair out, and you realize this thick pair of tweezers is just not getting that hair like you want. But what you want is a real thin, fine pair of tweezers. Pointy tip. Why do you want that? Because you know that pointy tip gonna reach down and get that hair. And that's what we gonna do to this cutter blade. We gonna make this cutter blade go from this to paper thin, tight teeth at the end, which slice and get the hair tight and crispy. All right. And the reason why is I don't want my barber going over my line three, four, five times, making my skin irritated. And I definitely don't want to be sitting in the chair extra long. I want to get in and get out and take care of my business. So I'm going to modify his blades and I'm going to make them James crispy sharp. But at the end of the day, he is a celebrity barber. And you know, a celebrity barber got to make all his clients look like a celebrity. All right. So let's get it. And remember, how we clean the blades. You make sure you keep everything separated. Get it nice and clean. Nice and dry. And get a different section of the paper towel. Try not to use too, the same section of the paper towel too many times. All right, so the first thing you want to do, of course, you take the cutter blade and sit it in a clean place. And then you want to remember the whole concept is to thin out the teeth. And you want to put this inside of this clamp. You want to get this clamp at about a 45 degree angle. All right, once you get it at 45, you want to come across here ever so lightly and ever lightly even but you want to stay smooth and don't move and guess what you got to know what you doing stay smooth don't move watch this now you take a look at the tip of the blade can you see that at the very tip of the blade we knocked in a 45 degree angle and you want to make sure you get it in nice and even. Let's do it again. Stay smooth. Don't move. All right. We're going to get this side just a little bit more. 
Okay. So now we got at the angle we want, but now it's a rough filling. So this side going to buff that roughness clean out. So now you get it on this side, you get it right up to here, and you buff that angle on. Now it should have a nice clean finish. Can you see that? Nice clean finish, 45 degree angle, modified teeth. Now my barber going to be able to get tight, crispy lines. Now after you do that, you rub it across your hand. It might have a, a rough filling. You don't want it dragging on the skin. You want it to slide across the skin smooth, right? No dragging or slicing. So you cut the wheel off. And once the wheel slow down just a little bit, you got that action but no power. You want to stay smooth and don't move. Get right here at the tip. Buff. Start straight. And then keep bending up, 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 up. Start straight. And keep bending up, 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 up. And then on the tips, turn the wheel back on. Get the speed back up a little bit. On the tips. And now, you got a smooth finish. Alright. Then you can take it. And you just wipe the blade down one more time. Now, there is some assembly required. So what you want to do is get your corded liner blade. Then you want to get your blade guide. You're going to take the blade guide and put it in place. Now, putting it in place means getting the screws set and locked. But you don't want to tighten them too, too tight that you can't move for your adjustment. So you get it in there and you twist until it kind of stop. Twist the screws in until it stop. Now you take your cutter, put it on the cone, lock it in, and you slot it. And what you want to do is, look at me. You want to get the blade up at eye level. Looking at the blade, you want to zero gap the blade. Now, when you zero gapping, that basically means the blade is close as it can, teeth to teeth, cutter to teeth, and the comb teeth close. Zero. No gap between them. But it's never an overbite because an overbite, you're going to cut the skin. But you don't want it to be too far away, and you don't want it to be overbite. So you get to it at eye level, you look at it, and you set it. And a lot of people like to use those blade setters. But each blade is set differently, so you would be better off just setting it by with your eye. Keep on rocking until it's even. And it's close and set. Zero gap. Now once I get a zero gap, I'm going to show you what a zero gap blade look like. Nice and even. Okay. Now, I got a zero gap. You can see how the teeth, and the cutter teeth and the comb teeth are very close, but there's no overbite. Now, once you get it set, you take your thumb and you put it at the top. You take your index finger and you squeeze. Do not let that blade move. Then you put it down like this to the table and you tighten the blade. This way, you know it don't move. And then you take a look at it one more time and you see that it didn't move and it's set. Now you're going to take and get your clipper, take the screws off that we have set in. Now keep in mind, this ain't, a, this ain't a one and done situation. You might put this thing on and the blade might move a little bit because of the tension spring and it might shift a little bit because of the setting. Now if you want in the description, I put the video of how to adjust the tension spring so that it can help you. And if you have problems with that, please go to the video on how to adjust the tension spring. So we're going to get this in here nice and tight and set this blade. And you want to make sure it's even in the back and straight. And you want to make sure it's centered and straight. Once we get it all set straight and centered, you look at it one more time. Everything good. And then you plug it up. And 
Now you want to turn it on. And it's to sound nice and clean. And I always take one clean shot of booze juice. Blade boost. And now you see the completed blade. All right. Now for the corded liners, you're going to get your blade. Of course, you get your blade guide. Sit it in place. And remember, you're going to take the screws and you're going to screw them in, but not tight. You screw them in until they stop so that you can be able to make your adjustment. And you're going to take your cutter. You sit it right there. And now watch me what I have to do to make the adjustment. So you put the blade at eye level and you want to zero gap the blade. Now zero gapping means the cutter and the comb teeth come together with no gap between them. But there's no overbite because an overbite means you will cut the skin. But you don't want it to be under because being under means you won't get a crispy line. So you make that adjustment, slide it up until you zero gap it. And you close one eye and you'll be able to see how close the blade is at the top. Once I get the blade set at zero gap, I'm going to show you what it look like. Make sure it's even and zero gap. Okay, now we're going to let you see what it look like. Now once you get it set, you take it, you put your thumb on the top, your index finger on the bottom, and you hold it down to the table, and you hold it nice and tight so that nothing moves, and then you tighten the screw. Now what you want to do, take a look at it one more time, make sure nothing moves and everything is even and zero gapped. Still good. Okay, now get your corded liners. Sit them in there, lock them in. These is pretty much set. Now remember, it won't be a one and done situation. You always remember, sometimes when you go to put the blade on the trimmer, when it get engaged with the motor, sometimes it may be a shift. And sometimes you might have to take the blade off and reset the blade and gradually set it based on how it moved on the trimmer. So it could be a process of taking it on and off a few times until you get it just right. It's a trial and error type of thing. So once you get it on, turn clip on, and it should be nice and set. What I always like to do is take a do one shot of blade boost, and that gets you all set. All right. Now for your corded masters, you grab your masters, and always remember, whenever you're changing your master blade over time, the fork was supposed to be tight if over time the pressure pushes these two together but you want them to be separated slightly so that when you clip the blade in it keeps that cutter stiff and strong while it vibrates so you take your flathead screwdriver you separate them slightly just a little bit once they get separated slightly now you can take the cutter and you slap it in on this side and then push and it's a snap in and look it's stiff if it rock or rattle a little bit that means you're going to hear rattling when the blade turn on the next thing is this most barbers they don't like this lever to move on its own they want it to be like have a stiff movement so that when they move it it stays if it's like this it will move while cutting so you take Phillips head screwdriver and you just tweak, tighten it all for just a little bit. Now, look, it's stiff. Now that's what you really want. So when you set it, it's set. Okay, now you take the screws off. And then you place the blade in place. You can see the screw holes. You put them back in like this. And you don't make them too, too tight. You want the blade to be close, 
but not too, too close, but not far away. So let me set it, and then I'm going to show you what it should look like. Make sure it's even and centered. All right, now you can see. That's what it should look like. Now, once you get it in place, you hold it with your index finger and your thumb. And then you finally tighten it down. Now with the masters, you're going to plug them up and you might have to do a slight adjustment. And I'm going to show you how to, the best adjustment to do. Okay, so with the masters, you turn them on. Shoot a little oil in them. Blade boost if I like to use. And once they're on and they're running, as you can see, they're nice and smooth. But what you want to do is take the power screw. Turn it to where you hear that. And then you come back and get it in the center. About right there. That's where your, most of your power is. And now you hear that? Nice and powerful. It should be set for you. Now there's other things that you can do. But in the description, I'll put the other video on how to tune up a master. And this way you can see the full tune up. But that's the basic way you put your blade back on. Now for your corded seam. The first thing you want to do is take your cutter. Now, of course, we're going to remove this screw. And then you look at the tension spring. Most of the time, because of pressure, over time, the tension spring start to flatten out. But you need that tension spring to be up. So you take your finger and pull it up a little bit so that it's, it's like this. So you pull it up a little bit, and now it's standing up a little bit. Now you're going to take the cutter and drop it right there on the tension spring, and it should be sitting up. Now you're going to take your cone, and you drop it like that. Now, what you want to do is remember, if you want an adjustment where it moves for you, you take and you loosen these two screws slightly, not too, too loose, but loosen them enough. Now, you can move the blade around a little bit and you can make your adjustment. So, you bring the blade down, make your adjustments. If you want it tight, you get it tight. If you don't want it too, too tight, you pull it back. But you get it straight and you get it close and set. Now, I'm going to set it. The way I like it, and then I'm going to let you see what it looked like. So you put your screw in there, and now you set it. Making sure it's even. And this is what it should look like about. All right. The next thing you want to do is you check and make sure this is not too loose. And if it is, you tighten it up like that. The next thing you want to do after that is you want to plug it up. And shoot a little oil into the blade and let it run. What I like to do is shoot a little blade boost into the clipper. Boom. Now once it's in place, this is how you check the power screw. You get your flathead screwdriver and you back the blade up. You see how I just knocked the blade off? This power screw knock it off. But what you want to do is now you want to twist the power screw until it's loud. Now, once it's loud, and you come off the loud, it's off this way. Now you center it. And once you get it centered, it stops. So you move it until... Now, it's set, it's powerful, in the center, and that's the power you're looking for. Okay? We all set. That's the power you want. All right, that's how you do that. Now for the cordless magic clip wall clippers, you want to take these jammies, the cutter, and you're going to put it in place. These are the easier ones because these cordless clippers are usually set for you. You don't have to do much. You're going to remove the screw, of course. The only thing you got to worry about is making sure you set the blades close as you want and even without no overbite. So you get the blade in place. Put the screws in. You don't want to lock them in too, too tight. You just want to get them in nice and snug enough so that you can make your adjustment. So now you push this close. As you can see, that's a bad overbite. 
this cutter is too far back. So you just take and you shift it until you get it closest to zero gap as you would like it where it's no overbite. So I'm gonna set that to about right there. You see that? Now once it's set, you hold it in place and then you wanna tighten it. All right, you turn them bad boys on. And if this is too loose, if it's not tight enough, you just tighten it a little bit right there. And then hit it with some oil or some blade grease. All right, ready to this bad boy, ready to go. Stay smooth, don't move. So now we gotta restore this rusty blade. Now. I showed you how to sharpen the blade. That take care of the bottom part of the rust on the blade. That will grind it out. But the top part of the blade, we of course, we let it sit in the blade boost all that time. Now, once you take it out of the blade boost, the blade boost helps the process. It broke it down. Then you take a wire brush. And what you want to do is use the wire brush to get everything loose off. Now after that, the next thing you want to do is come over to this T-sharp. You got to turn the T-sharp on the side. So I'm going to click this to get my side running. Now watch what we do. You see that? Pick up our speed a little bit. Look what we got. Let's keep going. That's how we get the in the groove right here. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and start working at it. I'll show you my finished product. Now we got to get this flat part. So we want to pick up some more speed. Okay, we got all that surface rust off. Look how good that looks. got some dark spots in there we're gonna try to see if we can get them out with the next level okay so now we're gonna to go to the top to this wheel So this will, as you can see, that black spot is starting to fade out slightly. So let's keep going. All right. So we can see we got a little bit of buffing going in here. We're going to keep on buffing.
like you see how that's a little bit of a deterioration but we got that black spot out and we're gonna do the same thing back here <laughs> So now what we want to do is get a paper towel, clean it off as best we can. So this is what we got so far. Now the suck is hot. I'm making it look good, but it's hot. So I usually take this can of air and I cool it down. And let's ice it out. And now, you see that? It cooled down so much that's, that's frost. So once it's cool, now I can touch it again. So now we're going to come over here, and usually you take a little of this buffing surface for finishing, razor sharpness, but finishing with the shine. So you would take some of this and squeeze that, as you can see, I did it already. Now watch what this does for us. Look at that shine. Coming back a little bit. Let's go over here. All right, look what we got. Let's go back. You see, this is deterioration. It burned into the metal. We ain't going to be able to get that out, but we can see that I burned out. But we're going to get this sucker back good. getting hot again so I gotta cool this sucker down Bam. all right back iced out so let's finish up Basically, this is the finished product. Hey, I know I time-lapsed it and everything. I sped it up because I really wanted to get those spots out. And now that I got everything nice and clean, what I'm going to do now is sharpen the other side. And we're going to modify on the T-sharp. And then that will complete our blade sharpening and restoring and buffing. Boom, we done. I showed y'all everything. I showed y'all how to use the twice as sharp machine to modify. I showed y'all how to bring a blade back to life with the T-Sharp. I showed you how to sharpen the blades with Traco. And I showed you how to clean them. Bro, because of him, y'all got a full lesson. But guess what? <clears throat> Check it out. Restore the blade. Got his hitters. Got his wireless joints. Cordless joints. His liners. Hitting. And then we even modified his corded T.I. liner, his master, his wall senior. We got him trump tight. But really, I'm the one trump tight. Because it's time for me to get a haircut. And these blades is hitting. But like I told y'all before, y'all know him. But y'all don't know him. Oh, he's a celebrity barber. He's my barber. And I'm going to let y'all meet him. When I drop these clippers off, we're going to go to his house. But guess what? Y'all might all be saying, hey, what exactly is a celebrity barber? Well, you know what? The definition of a celebrity barber have three names. Number one, the first one, it's a barber who run to all sports events, running up on celebrity players, running up on concerts, sports events, basketball, football, soccer, baseball, concerts. And he run up on all these people. And what he do? He give them a card. He keep doing this day after day, year after year, until eventually he imposes will on people and he get a chance to cut some of them. And you know what he'll do? Soon as he get him in the chair, what he do? Grab his phone. Click. Click. Take a picture with him. 
Put him up on Instagram and he tell everybody, bruh, I'm a celebrity barber. I charge $150 a cut. But is he really? Is he really a celebrity barber? Well, think of it like this. If I work at McDonald's and I'm flipping burgers and then LeBron come through the McDonald's line and order a cheeseburger, I hand the man a cheeseburger. Then I run home and say, I'm a celebrity chef. Does it make me a celebrity chef just because I made a burger for LeBron? No, I just made a cheeseburger for LeBron. And so all those dudes who do that, they're not celebrity barbers. They just a barber who happened to cut a celebrity hair and snap the picture, got on Instagram and told you he was a celebrity barber. Now here's the second meaning of celebrity barber. It's a barber who really do cut celebrities. He actually worked on movie sets he might even be an official instructor for Anders, Wall, Babyliss. He might even go to the award show and get an invite to come cut for these actors at these award shows. He might get flown in and out of state or country for a particular star, a celebrity, and he cuts their hair. He might even do interviews or shows. He is well known as a person who specifically cut celebrities and even have a private celebrity that he worked for. That's a celebrity barber. Now, the third celebrity barber is a celebrity barber that you all created. How so? Well, he got millions of followers on YouTube. He got millions of views on his, view, his videos because of you watching them. And guess what? Usually, they're really good barbers. They even teach you how to cut hair. And what they do is they take a whole hour. And of course, you know what they do. They time lapse every video. And they charge a lot of money because we made them famous by watching their videos and subscribing. But guess what? They teach you well. But you go home and try to do all the stuff that they do in that video. And you spend an hour on that one customer, they get 150 and they getting paid by YouTube. So they don't matter how long they take on that haircut. So they making money and you get $25 from that one customer in one hour because you followed everything he did in that video and he time lapsed it, but it took him an hour. Oh, he a celebrity barber and every cut he do, you know what he do when they finish? Shoot that black paint on it. Line is crispy, but that's a celebrity barber. Now the fourth celebrity barber, it's only one in the world that exists. It's the celebrity barber that I created for you to see. It's my barber. He is a celebrity on his own, but he cut my hair. And y'all all know him, but you don't know him. And y'all gonna meet him. Yes, my barber is Danny Granger. Yeah, y'all know who I'm talking about. That dude, that dude. If you look at that 2011, 2K joint, y'all know who he is. Y'all know what he did on the East Coast when he was with the Pacers. And guess what? He went to all states. The Heat, the Clippers, the Pacers. That's probably why his Clippers rust now. But I'm going to take y'all to his house, and y'all going to see homeboy cut my head. So, all right, let's 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 lace these bad boys up. Let's get ready. We about to go. Yeah, we going to go see my barber, the real celebrity barber. All right, y'all. All right, I'm going to call him right now. So we can drop these clippers off. And that way he can come out. Yo. Hey, what up, Daddy? You ready? Yeah, I want you to... Um, I'm here. I'm at the house, bro. Oh, you... Oh, yeah, you okay? Come on in there. Oh, all right. So, um, yeah, just come on out. I'm in front of the house. I'm going uh, to bring the stuff to you and chop everything up. And uh, let you see right. the clip. All right, see. All right. What's going on, What's man? What's up? How you been, man? What's happening, man? Yeah, I got the good, man. bro. What's happening, <laughs> yeah, man? Yeah, nice to see you, bro. Hey, bro, I'm going to sit these baby boys right here. Okay. And uh, you go ahead and look through them. Tell me what you think. I restore stuff. Pull out your hitters. Let me, see, let me let know me what see. you think about these joints. These are my favorite ones right here. Oh, you got those nice. Oh, those are back. All right, let me see my other core. These are the ones I use the most. My core oh, yeah, ones right sure. here. Yeah. They even, they clean. Yeah, that's what's up. Was you able to get the uh, rust off those other ones? Oh, yeah, I did. Pull them jammies out, bro. I wasn't playing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, them boys ready. 
Man, he's ready. Yeah, I'm ready. It's about it's oh, you, you brought these back to life. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah, man, our clipping service is nice. It is. But uh, what's more important than that is they're going to be nice for me to get a cut. Hey, right now, a lot of cats send me messages and they like, bro, your boy, nah, we seen him hoop. We uh, know he's nice, but he ain't nice with the clippers, bro. <laughs> they don't believe it, man. The yeah. cats don't believe it. All right, well, I, I, can cut, I can cut you right now. Oh, nah, nah. We got to do it. We got to do it big time. We're going to have you come down to the studio. We're going to let you cut me at the studio. We're going to talk sports. Talk real life, real dudes, real life, real barbers, talking smack. All right, let's All right? do it. Let's that, do it. That's let's what's do up. It. Let's, All right, let's do bro. it. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. All right, y'all gonna see us down at the spot. We gonna chop it up. And I'm gonna get my hair cut. Got them 360 Dremamine waves, and we gonna get this taper. Check it out. I want to thank all y'all for watching our videos. Hey, you see something you like? Subscribe. Hit the like button. If you don't, drop a comment. Tell us why. As usual, we're going to conclude with a little bit of music.